I mentioned that most professors cannot solve this problem. I sent the problem to 17 people. None of them could solve it. Some of them actually said they are sorry, but they have no clue. None of them sent me correct solution. Seven of them never answered, which I believe probably because they couldn't do it either. Since I said most professors cannot solve this problem, I said, which I regret after the fact, probably Professor Vermeer cannot solve the problem either. I have an enormous respect for Professor Vermeer. His lectures are famous and so is his book. But solving this problem is a different issue. Avi Leup, Leup was the only person of 18 well-known professors who snapped it and had the solution in less than 24 hours. I was hoping that Professor Verma would not make an attempt to explain it, because if he never made the attempt, no one would ever know whether he can do it or not. Well, he put a, a video on his channel and of course my viewers sent me the, the website. And so I watched the video a few times. Hold on to your chair. It's blatantly wrong. Yes it is. He believes that because of Faraday's law there will be a current into the superconductor. And then he uses somehow the B field that is caused by that current to eliminate also the B field from the magnet so that the net B field is zero. There can not be any current in the superconductor. In principle, there can be a current in a superconductor, and of course, still the electric field everywhere is zero. In principle, that can be done. You take a battery which has an internal resistance R, voltage V, and you short it out with a superconductor, and if you wait long enough, a current will flow I, which is V over R. And that current has to go through the superconductor. The E field that is produced is in that resistor R. That's why it works. But in our case, the entire looper loop is superconducting. So there is no way that ever any current can flow in the superconductor. Watch Professor Verma's video again. It's blatantly clear. He puts it there. And then he jumped through a few more loops to somehow, I think he even introduces Lenz law to somehow argue that that current in the superconductor produces a B field that cancels the B field of the magnet. It's wrong physics. The beauty is that Faraday's law creates electric field, an EMF, just outside the superconductor. At the surface of the superconductor, there will be a current. And that is possible, because at the surface of the superconductor, the resistance is not zero. Isn't that beautiful, how nature works? And it is that current at the surface of the superconductor that causes a magnetic field, 
Straightforward, has nothing to do with Lenz law, a straightforward magnetic field that added to the magnetic field due to the magnet adds up to zero. And that's what's called the Meissner effect. Well, I may lose all my one million <laughs> Indian subscribers. Professor Loeb also watched the video by Professor Verma and he came to the same conclusion. He said, <laughs> of course, it's blatantly wrong. Uh, he knows how important India is for me and how much this may be upsetting many Indian people. So he said to me, you know, Walter, what you should do, just say that Verma's solution is incomplete. <laughs> I said, but, but Avi, many other wrong solutions are incomplete. Should I mention all wrong solutions that are incomplete? And, and he started laughing. And he said, both of you right. Call a spade of spades. It's wrong. End of story. Now, I want to stress once more. Should Professor Verma feel bad about this? No, not at all. I couldn't do it either. He gave it a shot, as several other of my, of the people whom I asked, world famous scientists, they, some of them also gave it a shot. Everyone failed, except Avi Loeb. So, is it so bad to admit that it's wrong? No. He's a great man, Verma. He will always be that for me. And it is irrelevant, truly irrelevant for me, that his solution to this problem is wrong. And it should also be irrelevant to you. So this is the end then of this very difficult problem. And I hope there will not be unpleasant ripples in the future. I'm not going to argue about this any further. This is my last, last word on it. We're going to move on to another problem, 120. Have a nice time. Take care. And we'll be friends. And I'll be friends with Professor Furma. And I hope he wants me to be his friend. I would like to add that in April 2014, I gave a lecture at the Indian Institute of Technology in Kanpur. And I had hoped that Professor Verma would be there. But he wasn't. He was retired and probably had more important things to do. Great school. I was six weeks in India and gave eight lectures at different institutions and universities. All great schools. All eight. All eight great. <laughs> <laughs>